Hi everyone, it's Kirk and Michael for this week's edition of The Rundown. This week's edition of The Rundown? <laughs> okay, this month's? This quarter's Oh, edition. this is months, but we're, we're going to get better. I, we had a lot going on, okay? Yep. So we're going to get on a more regular pace here. Uh, Michael, this was, a, this was a rundown you were excited to share. I was. I really was. This one, we're, do, we're doing a sort of a deeper dive into a case study that I think is very helpful for people to be able to zoom out a little bit to see maybe the before and after of why planning like this is so, so important and the impact that it has on people's lives. Yeah, so Michael, I think we both, I mean, there's a number of different agendas we have with this rundown in trying to help people uh, to better trust. I think what this is about is as early as possible in the relationship after attending the class. If, if we end up working together, early in the relationship, trusting the plan, mm -hmm. right? It's one of the things we've really worked on with our advisors. It's one of the th in, in our private practice, by the way, because I know this also get, goes out on our charity's website. So uh, in our private practice, one of the things we've, we've really focused on in the class, we've also focused on the plan will dictate the outcomes, mm -hmm. how we should invest, when we should take Social Security, when we can retire, how much income we can have, whether we need life insurance or not, how much insurance you do or don't need. Uh, how much guaranteed sources of income do you need? The plan, the plan itself, what the 25, 30 year plan will drive everything that should happen and when it should happen. Not my feelings, Michael's feelings, your other advisor's feelings. Who's in the White feelings. House, how the economy is doing, what the stock market's doing, it, that stuff's irrelevant. Irrelevant, it's 100% irrelevant. The plan will drive the answers. Um, through risk mitigation, stress testing, and all the different things and the iterations, the hundreds of iterations we take through the plan, then we can make final decisions based upon the plan. So it's not how you feel, it's not how we feel. And so I know this case study, and we're gonna actually show a plan here today, right? Uh, is taking somebody, in, in these people who were their actual clients uh, in our private practice, they're great. I love these people. Uh, they're highly intelligent, highly intelligent. Executives for major companies, that well-known companies. Um, uh, I, I don't want to say all their degrees. I probably There's should. a chance Kirk might get bleeped out today if he says too much. <laughs> right. So, because um, I, I just want to protect people's privacy. Mm -hmm. um, but these are highly intelligent people, very involved in their money, in the markets, in the law in accounting, these people are very advanced and sharp. Too advanced and sharp, because they have, like most of you watching, have no idea on what's gonna drive success in retirement, and came in with ideas about what they wanted for retirement and what it should look like. And there was a lot of biases that, you know, baggage that they came with mm -hmm. that I think they've been clients, I, I, how long do you remember? Has it been six uh, years, seven? Six or seven years. Six or seven years. And I think we've gotten better at uh, unpacking the baggage mm -hmm. early in the relationship. I think today we're better at it. So what we're gonna take them through is sort of the life cycle of how their plan evolved, how many potential mistakes it created, how much extra time it took for us, how much frustration it created for them. Mm -hmm. Because up front, they didn't unpack the baggage coming in here and trust us, the team, the education we gave in the class, and it, they didn't trust their plan. And some of that's on them and some of that's on us. I mean, it to is. your point, that's part of our job is yeah. to help them unpack that. I like that term, unpacking the baggage. And it is totally on us. We were not nearly as good at it seven, six, seven years ago as we are today. And it's proven because as we go through this really quickly, I originally took care of this client. Then Michael t took care of the client, servicing them. And now Jake is taking care of the client. And it was finally Jake that convinced them mm -hmm. to finally, we're gonna retire. We're gonna buy our million dollar home that we can afford. We're gonna do all the things that w we didn't listen to Kirk and Michael on. <laughs> and it, and it's, it's just, we've gotten better at helping people to uh, adjust their relationship with money and trust the process. That's what it can't, comes down to. And so I think, you know, evaluating this life cycle for this person will maybe help other people recognize, 
oh, wait a minute, that might be me. I might be the one not quite trusting the plan or kind of hedging my bets here. And because I'm, I'm doing that, I'm causing the plan to be a little inefficient. I'm causing more time and stress for myself and for the team. And if we can get past that quicker, it's better for everybody. So I let's agree. dive in. All right, Michael. So let me sort of set the stage of points that I want to make sure come through with uh, what we're going to share here. So we're going to mm -hmm. go through an example. It's not an example plan. It's actually, well, our example plan is an actual plan too. <laughs> yeah. But this is another client of ours plan in our private practice that we want to share. Um, I think they came to us in 2016. They had come through the class because that we require everyone in our private practice to come through the class. So it's 2016. I don't think our messaging was as good. I don't think our education in the class was as good. Well, I wasn't here yet, so of course it wasn't as good. <laughs> of course it wasn't as good. Uh, I don't know if Josh was here at that point. Josh was probably here around then. Yeah. Um, so so here's, here, here's what happened. Here are the things I want to make sure you recognize. The number of plan updates and changes that occurred. When they came in, they told us they wanted to retire by X. That date that they wanted to retire, remember, drives our allocations, what we invest in, how much, how aggressive, how conservative, different buckets of money. If you don't understand the buckets, go back and watch that rundown. But the plan dictates how we invest, and we followed what they claimed to be their goals. Mm -hmm. Their goals have changed six times, right? And so, as a result of poor um, uh, maybe a poor job that we've done and maybe too much, having too much knowledge, thinking they knew too much, resulted in we, we should have had better performance if we would have got this right the first time. We would have chosen better annuities for their income. We could have had more tax efficiency. We could have had um, proper, I said proper funding of, of, of hybrids. The plan dictates what we do with your money. Mm -hmm. So when, when we don't have the right information or people misunderstand, how do I say this? I'm, I'm so originally, for example, they, they told us that, and we, we changed their names here. This says John and Diane, that's not their real names. Yes. They told us that Diane was going to be retiring within about four years. So within about, about, about 2020. Yes. And so when we built the plan, part of that Part of the planning process is allocating the dollars. How do we pick the investments? And so based on their retirement date of 2020-ish, we built the plan with a red zone with safe money mm -hmm. that we thought they would need by 2020 or so. Correct. Well, due to a lot of things. Due to COVID, I think they scapegoated COVID a little bit. You know, I think things so are too. so crazy. We're not going to So they worked longer than they told us they were going to. A lot of that we believe was fear it and was. not quite understanding and or trusting the plan. You know, people thinking, I'll just work longer, what's the worst that can happen? So they, they didn't actually retire around 2020. They worked several years longer. As a result, those dollars that were sitting in the red zone that we thought would be spent in 2021 didn't get spent until 2023 or 2024. No, they're not even spending them yet. So those dollars <laughs> could have been sitting in yellow or green zones, getting much, much more growth. Yes. Instead, they sat in red zones for six, seven years yes. because we thought they'd be spent, but they weren't okay. because they changed the plan, they changed their minds, they worked longer. Right, when we were triggering hybrids, when we were gonna do Roth conversions, they had a lot of capital gains that were needed to be recognized. They had some concentration risk issues. It was a lot of things based upon what they said they were going to do, which they didn't do, and they haven't done it four different times now, has impacted their plan. And I blame us partially, but it's also, we have to have a willing, we have to have people who are really smart, willing to trust the plan and their team, trust the doctors. And I don't think we are as effective in our classes and our messaging early mm -hmm. on. I so, totally agree. So I think we're getting better now, and as a result, they have an incredible plan. They finally bought the house. Since the day I met them, they were talking about buying, buying my house. They wanted to buy my house. They wanted the plans for my house. They wanted, they were looking at warehouses. They, you name the idea. They were going through ideas about what to buy in retirement. And I, I believe, and they may think I'm wrong, is it was fear and not knowing how much they could afford to spend. 
they are now pulling trigger buying their million dollar plus home that they should have bought in 2017 because they are 18 because they could have afforded it their whole plan has changed everything from day one is a total 180 from where they were at their spending their retirement their income their their obsession with taxes instead of spending their money they were more concerned about not paying much taxes than actually enjoying the money. Mm -hmm. Just they stopped serving money and they're now starting to let that money serve them. And you know, I do want to be fair because we do recognize for people when they come through the class and they come to see us and we're asking in, the, in those early meetings all these questions. When do you want to retire? How much legacy do you want to leave? How much do you want to spend? If for, for someone who's trying to predict out three, five, seven years, we do recognize it's not easy to nail the retirement date. No, people it's not, don't yeah. always know. And some people, they want to work longer because they love their job. Or there are, there are some things that are going into that. And Sometimes they say they love their job and they're just really afraid. That's I'm sure people have, I'm sure I've, I've asked hundreds of people when they say, I love my job. I ask them all the time, do you love your job? or do you like your job? There's a difference between liking your job and loving your job. Yeah. If someone likes their job, that's fantastic, but that's not a reason we should be working longer than we have to, because yes. you probably love doing something else more. Right. You probably love taking vacations or love oh, visiting the grandkids. I love, I've, I'm, it may be the case with this one, I can't remember, but I'm making more money than I've ever made. Yeah. Well, duh, you're at the peak of your career. Yes, I know. At some point, you gotta walk away. And you're gonna make more next year, and you'll make more the year after that, yes. and more the year after that. So there are, there are some people who truly, truly do love their jobs and they want to keep working. And it's hard to predict out retirement dates and that's fair and that's fine. But for the people who they're working longer based on fear or based on anxiety, that's the stuff that we've got to coach out and we've done a much better job in the past couple of years. All right, jump in. Go through like the couple, couple of the six plan updates. Remember, every time we do a plan update, it's just, it just kills everyone it kills your plan it's inefficient it there's more greater chance of errors and the amount of work we're, we're going to start charging for plan updates we have to we're going to eventually have to we cannot keep up with the plan updates sorry so go ahead. all right so let's talk about some of the particulars in this plan and we'll identify how they change over time and some of the fallout from those from those people from those pieces changing over yeah, time i think it's important so number one diane was going to retire sometime around 2020 ish and they originally told us that they wanted to spend about 150 per year gross which for them was rough it's roughly 140 ish per year net because their plan was pretty tax efficient now that resulted in them leaving over four million dollars to their beneficiaries and for them, leaving that much wealth to the beneficiaries was not an intention, wasn't intentional, wasn't a priority for them. It was just a result of they did a great job earning and saving. Yep. They weren't very good spenders. And as a result, they were gonna leave a lot of wealth to their kids. Yep. A lot of fear, anxiety, and behavioral habits that we weren't as good at coaching early in, 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 through the class like we are today, I think. Exactly. So a couple years went by and by 2018, there's a plan update because by 2018 it became evident that Diane was not going to retire around 2020 because there are several things that came up. A lot of it was justification based on maybe fear about retiring and what that might feel like for them. I think COVID was a, was a for them, I mean, I, I think it was more of an excuse than a real issue. Um, from a retirement, from because a retirement their plan was still fine for them to retire, but they yes. didn't want to. So Diane chose to work a little longer. And despite Diane working longer, they did not want to increase their income target. It was still running at the equivalent of 150 per year gross, 140 ish per year net increase yep. for inflation. And so now their plan had them on track to leave over five and a half million dollars or over six million when you count the life insurance. Yep, and so still over, haven't bought that house they've been talking about. So, so the, now they're leaving over six million dollars. They still weren't spending, they still weren't retiring, they still hadn't bought the house they've been talking about for years. And so again, they were still serving the money, whether it's fear, anxiety, whatever, a lack of trust in the plan, whatever it was, they were still serving the money. Correct. So finally, at uh, 2021, 2022, I think it was, they shifted from, they saw Kirk for a while, then they saw me for a while, then they saw Jake. And Jake, I'm not sure what Jake did, but Jake cracked the code. 
He was they able. Did. He was able to get through to them to prove to them. And maybe it's a combination of they've been watching rundowns for a long time. They've been studying the plan for a long time. And Jake finally cracked the code to prove to them, look, you can afford to retire. You can afford to spend a lot more. You can afford to purchase that home. And they finally started to do that. So this is what their current plan looks like. I'm going to skip three or four plan revisions here to the current plan. So now, Diane is still working a little longer in a reduced capacity because Diane, truly again, loves. again, not her real name, but yes. she truly, truly does love what she's doing. She does. So she's, she's staying engaged to the, to the degree that she wants to, but she's slowing down. She likes to be in the mix. And they are super talented, by the way. They are okay. purchasing, or they purchased their, their dream home. So here you see here the $200,000 down payment for the home. Yeah, $200,000 for the million dollar home. Yep, they, they actually got a mortgage because that was a whole debate for a while. They got a mortgage because you're going to see why because they are going to be cash flow rich. And we increase their income up to $315,000 per year. They can afford the mortgage in that million dollar home. And so in that three fifteen, dollars now they're cash flowing the mortgage because it was a much better tax outcome for them to get a mortgage and keep Roth converting. Um, but now they're spending a lot more. They're in the new home. Diane's working less. I hope they're enjoying and traveling in retirement. And now they're also gifting now. They're gifting to uh, family. They're giving to charity. They have they QCDs are. coming online pretty soon. And now they're leaving somewhere in the range of about a million and a half dollars when they're gone, which is plenty of wiggle room. They could even spend a little more if they wanted. But this is this is where we got them, and this is good. Exactly. So from where they started to where they finally got to, they're in a great great spot now. But if we had if they had come in and been a little more honest either with themselves or with us, or if we had done a better job coaching them, which, well, is, probably, both. which is probably the bigger obstacle, yep, yep, candidly, yep. is we could have gotten to this plan originally. Yes. And if we had gotten to this plan originally, as opposed to seven or eight plan revisions later, their original plan, it could have been more efficient, there would have been less stress for them, less work for us, it could have saved a lot of time and hassle. Yeah, and they would have had, they probably, like, they would have had some different puzzle pieces. I would, could have even produced a little better outcomes. Mm -hmm. um, could have reduced some errors on other people because we're plan updating and the amount of work associated with plan updates is excessive and it's why we've really cracked down only doing plan updates when there's major life events. Mm -hmm. But let's get this right up front. And I, I also think, by the way, sprinkled in there, I think they also came back through a class. I think they came back through a class maybe two times. I, I think they did. and I, and. And we have gotten better in our courses at the educational piece, the behavioral piece. And what we find is for those who we end up helping coming through the class, they're better prepared to give us good information and trust the plan and trust their team. And so um, I, I think it's generally a good idea for anyone that ha that's been with us for a while that come on back through the class every couple three years mm -hmm. come on even if you stream it come back through the class the messaging is changing the strategies are evolving the communicate the way we communication communicate the information it also helps you better understand what's going on in your own plans now i think it's just totally different and 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 more helpful for people to be able to enjoy their retirement for sure. And this is why, you know, we do get people occasionally in account reviews, you know, why do you keep challenging me on, on my retirement date? Why do you keep challenging me on my spending target? Well, this is why, because we know that sometimes people will trick themselves into thinking, I want to work longer, I don't want to spend more. And if we can challenge and elicit that, that response, we can figure out, unpack that baggage, to use your phrase, and get to this best plan quicker, which is more efficient for everybody. It is. Um, Michael, some of this is, is uh, well, a lot of it's the relationship with money, but it's, it's they got to engage in the education throughout the process so that we can get best outcomes. For sure. I mean, these people, they watch all the rundowns, they watch all the they lunch have. and learns. And, I mean, thankfully, because if they hadn't, they might never have gotten here. 
Part of, part of getting here was we're better, we're better at coaching, but a lot of this is they did a lot of work on their own to come they to did. more classes, watch all the rundowns, watch all the lunch and learns, which really helped them get to this point as well. So uh, one of the messages, remember now through the charity, we've taught over 10,000 people over the last decade. We have, uh, we have so much data to, under, to better understand how you're gonna behave, how you're gonna react, what you're going to spend, what mistakes you're going to make, what mistakes you have made, and that's all part of the plan. And we've built that in, and you just trust the process. I, I mean, I, I hope this is helpful for us to take you through a life cycle of someone that's been with us for a long time. For you newer people, I think we're doing a much better job. We're getting this quicker. I agree, well, that's because I'm here now. That's totally right. <laughs> it's you, it's all the youth that we have, really talented people, and you're getting the, the old guy out. So. <laughs> Not quite yet. All right, we good? I think we're good. All right, so until next time, we'll see you soon.